Hey, welcome. This is Mike Burris with spiritmusicmeetups.org. It's my old website that's been incorporated into the drum tab on that spiritmusicmeetups.org. Hey, I wanted to explore uh, something I call the expanding universe. And in this case, it's the behind me, we're going to refer to this board. Over here on the right side are what I call stroke types. You know, normally there's only four stroke types that they mention in all these books. I have 200 of them. Uh, they mention what's called the full or rebound stroke. They mention the down or control stroke. And they talk about the up stroke or ups, uh, just an up. And then they talk about the tap stroke. But actually there's nine. And we'll explore those. Uh, you know, I ask the Lord a lot about uh, music and drumming, and I just listen. That's actually prosuke prayer, is to listen and watch. Uh, it's not just a monologue telling God what we want, but actually listening to see what He wants and what His ideas on things are. So I did some listening, and uh, a lot, some of this actually occurs very organically in the middle of a drum lesson. So a while back, with working with a star student of mine, we were talking about this, and, and it just really comes, and I just receive it. You know, when it comes, I don't question it anymore. So one of the things we'll talk about is the starting stroke I call a high, medium, or low. So that's the height that the stroke starts at. We'll talk about that. And then the second letter I call is the, the stroke height of the next time that hand is used in the rudiment. And we'll talk about that. So, for instance, this arrow shows that it starts up high, hits very loudly because it's high, and then goes back up so that it's prepared and ready for the next time it is going to be used. It, that hand. Because the left hand might be doing some other stuff, while the right hand is preparing for the next time it plays. So it's kind of like the Boy Scout, motto, uh, Boy Scout motto, which is always be prepared. So if you want to play fast, you have to always be in position for the next time that hand is used. So we'll, let's talk about that. So we have the first height is either in drum line, you look down the drum line, the line of drums, and you should only see sticks all the way up for accents, okay, all the way up for accents. I'm going to use traditional grip here because I, I like, I'm perfecting it, or you can use match grip. So all the way up, it's hard to do that with traditional grip, but you can do that, tuck your elbow in, <laughs> kind of hard to do. So just this is all the way up. That's for accented strokes, you know. And let's talk about those accented strokes. You can see over here that you either have loud or very loud, forte or fortissimo. You might have to zoom in. Maybe I'll just pick up the camera and show that to you. So, so you have very loud or forte, loud strokes. There's your accents. So there's your H's. Down on the bottom level with the drum is your, your lows, and those are for soft and very soft, piano and pianissimo volumes. And then exactly in the middle at a 45 degree angle, your stick will be playing medium, which is medium soft or medium loud. So medium soft is a little bit lower, medium loud is a little higher. So Basically, 45 degree, and that's the only places your stick should be, high, medium, or low, okay? So, let's go back to looking at what we're going to do here. So, if I can see to do this. So, over here, you can see we have high, high, and that's a full stroke. We'll talk about that. And it's unrestrained energy, so you let it rebound back up to its starting position. So it started high, hits hard, rebounds unrestrained 
back to its starting position. And so we have some strokes that you can work here. A loud right, and you don't care about what the left hand's doing at this point. You're concentrating on your right hand. Over here, I put a little comma here, then you're concentrating on just the left hand. Just repeat this until you get the hang of it, and then repeat this until you get the hang of it. Going from here to here is going to be more challenging, right? So you can see that going from here to here is going to be more challenging. So don't worry about that. Here is an example of both hands returning back into this full stroke position, going back up. So let's, look, let's explore that, okay? So putting the phone down. This is a little awkward, but we can do it. So this is a full stroke. See, I just let it rebound. It almost rebounds out of my hand. I, but I keep my fingers slightly on it so that I don't pull my fingers in because that'll hold it down. I let it rebound. So I just flick my fingers. There's my fulcrum. And I'm just flicking my fingers like I'm flicking water off of it. Just enough to get the stick to move and my fingers ride on the stick back so it just kind of rides on the stick same thing here oh we need to move this over so i get a lot of reflection here see the fingers it's really just rebounding to exactly the starting position. So you pick a starting position, maybe a little circle out here in the air, and you just bring it back. You let it rebound like a rubber ball. You don't hold it down, you let it rebound. Try to do just a wrist, so you're not using your arm to do this. All right? If it was fortissimo or triple forte or something like that way up here, but just pick a spot. I look at a mirror, and I put a bungee cord on the mirror, and I bring it to that spot. But I try to bring it right back into starting position. So I'm trying to square out here. So that's a full, which is an HH. So using our example up there, we could just focus on one hand. So I'm just... Focusing on getting that right hand back up to my starting position. So right, maybe right there. So notice I stay in the letter A. Now I'm letting those, flicking those fingers. Notice my left hand, I'm trying to keep it level. You know, it's going way back up there, and the same thing with the left side, or you start with the right, one and two and three, the offbeat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're not even getting into different ways to count these things. So I'm going to keep my elbow from moving. Just use my wrist. Now I'm going to flick my fingers. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Boy, that's getting a lot of reflection out of here. Okay. So, that is that. Now, let's look at, can you see up here? The high medium. The high medium, we got to get the return to the medium position. And why is that? Because, you can see over here, we have a loud right, but the second time the right is played, it's not as high. It's not accented. And this is common when you have uh, rudiments that have flams and drags and other compound strokes where you, you want to have the hand high enough to hear the compound stroke. The right hand is higher than the left hand, so you can hear the flam. But it's not an accented flam, and there's rudiments that do that. Uh, the flam acute. The flam is soft, and then you have the accent after it on the opposite hand. Fla ama cue, fla ama cue. So I say fla ama cue, fla ama cue. So let's, let's look at this. So here we got 
It's kind of a, a tap. It's like an accent flange. So here's the accent, and we have to come back to the medium position, not all the way up, because the thing that's after it is just that. So we go, and so we're not even talking about what we do on the second stroke. The first stroke is an HM. So there's the M. But if we looked at what the, that stroke has to be, it's a, it's a medium high because we have to get ready for the next time it's used when we repeat so we have a high medium and a medium high so we're kind of skipping ahead but there's an hm that's an hm and then this is an mh so we got back into position The other side, what is this? High, medium. Back into position. Always being prepared. See, if you go all the way down, then you're going to have to lift the stick up to get ready for the flam. That adds time, and you don't have time when you go fast. You have to eliminate all the unnecessary movement. It's about efficiency. So here's a high, medium, high, medium, high, medium. So you can just practice one of the hands. There it is. There's the loud and there's the medium. So you could just do that and then slip in the other hand. That's a way of doing a check pattern. Here's the check pattern. And then work in the other hand. Okay, so that's that. So now let's look at the HL. That's our common downstroke or control stroke. So it starts up high, but it ends low for the next low hit. And so that ends looks like this. You hold it down. If you're gonna use your fingers, waving your fingers, you're gonna make sure your fingers pull in and into the palm and stay there. So it ends level or slightly bent down. Either way works, okay? So that's the way that works. Or here, that's a downstroke or a control stroke. Little shaky today, went out running, needed to eat some more food. Little shaky today. So there's downstrokes. So you can just practice downstrokes. But you see, to get back up, it's no longer a downstroke, is it? Now you got an upstroke. So what this is for is because the next time the right hand plays, it's going to be a tap. Let's look at what we do with this. Here is right, left, right, left, right, left. I'm just going to drag it out here. So you can see, don't care about what the left hand is doing. There's the tap. That's why it had to be low. So at the very end, you have to do an upstroke to restart it. But you can see it just stays down there until you're ready It just stays down there. I'm going slow so you can see it. So there we go. That is the downer control stroke. Now we're done with the highs, the startings. Now we're going to do the mediums. You don't see these again very often unless you get into compound strokes, slams, drags, and those kinds of things where you need to start that are not accented, so you need to start in the middle. And you're gonna either end up high, medium, or low. So let's look at starting out medium, ending up high. There's a case of it. You have a non-accented right hand flam, but the next time the right hand's used is when it's very loud. So this is kind of like a, 
a flam, but you got to go up to get ready. So there's your medium to high. So we can just practice medium to high, medium to high, medium to high. Just get back into position, medium to high, medium to high. So here's a flam, and there we go. Now it doesn't tell me what to do on the second stroke, but it says here it's an HM. So medium to high, get back into the medium, high to medium. So here's the high. So we got, there's the high, and you got to get back into the medium if you're going to be ready to restart it, right? It's all about, if you're going to restart it, you got to be back into position. Medium to high, high to medium. See, I'm back in position. So, see, I went right back to the 45 degree. Notice I didn't go all the way down. That would be medium to low. I mean, that'd be high to low, right? That would get me out of position. Medium to high, high, right? Medium to high, back to medium. Let's do it on the left side. Back to medium. After a while, get that right. What you're doing is training your hands to always get back in a position. I'm hitting my sticks because I'm looking at the screen instead of where I'm hitting. I should be looking at here, getting back into my zone. Nice. I'm tucking my elbow in a lot here because I got a bunch of stuff over here I'm trying to avoid. Now, medium, medium is for just playing again, medium, soft, medium, loud. And let's go over here and see what that is. So that's like playing flams that are not accented. So we just got flam, 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 flam. See, it's, it's medium. We could put stuff in between that, right? Flam, inverted flam taps that are not accented. See, I'm not going all the way up, but you can hear that was all the way up. So work on the other side, right? Those are flams, medium flams. Meso forte flams. Now put a tap, inverted flam tap. Okay, so that that's that has its place. Let's look at medium lows. So that is because we have to get, we have to start out medium because it's non-accented flam, for instance. But the next time the right hand is used, it's soft. So, this is like a flam tap. Flam would be normal accented flam taps way up here. We're going to just go flam, and we have to stay down because the next one is soft. So you can always use the check pattern on your right hand. And then bring the left hand in. So I'm tapping on the same side, so that's a flam tap. I'm leaning so you can see the board, but you should sit straight up. My camera is a little angled too. really bring this over for you okay now you can put stuff in between it so I can go flam right and I just stick a tap in there flam. 
So it looks like an inverted flam tap. Tap. Now this is like one side of a flam accent, number one. Repeated on one side. Played one en, two en, three en, four en. It's almost like a trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse. But it's a flam accent number one. So now I'm going to put that little thing in between and there's my tap. So high, it was medium to low. There's my tap. So you could say a flam accent is a filled in filled in flam tap. All right, so that's that. Let's look over here at the I just I just love drumming, you can tell. I mean, God has given this to me since I was 8 years old. Um put so many things on my head. There we start out low. And we're going to end up high because the neck, and we call that an upstroke. So it's like up and it's all the way up. And we're going to look at what's called an inverted triplet, which is just a triplet that is turned around. So the accent's at the end. So, for instance, starting on the left side, we'd have tap and it goes up because the next time it plays, it's going to be loud. Tap. Up, tap. So you could call this maybe like a tap accent. And what they call that is an inverted double. Because we're accenting the second stroke of the double. But we're going to, uh oh, just broke that. My little trap table got broke. Time to glue it back together. So See how I'm, that's an inverted double. But we're going to put, we're going to fill in that, we're going to put a little fill in there, see that? And then, so now that's an, in, that's an inverted triplet. So it's, low and then it's high. Okay, there we go. Low high. How about low medium? We'll do the same thing. We'll just make that a flam at the end that's not accented. So we go dot. There's the first low coming up into the high, but it's going to go to the medium. I'm sorry, it's going to go high. It's going to go low to medium. So it's an upstroke, but it's only halfway up. See, I'm filling it in with this little left hand. going halfway up, picking a spot on the camera. Dun, dun, jump. Dun, dun, jump. Dun, dun, jump. Dun, dun. Right? So, just going up to there. Okay. Finally, let's do the low, low, which are taps for soft and very soft, pianissimo very soft and piano. Okay, and so that would be these little taps. These are something totally different. We're focusing on this. Tap, 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 tap. So when you're not playing very loud strokes, you should really think about staying down. And remember, mediums are very rare. Mostly it's always here or always down here. They call that two level playing. You're either up here or you're down here. You try not to be in the middle unless you have those strange non-accented flams and drags. These 
Roroka still drags. What do we have? Jesus. So these are all compound strokes. So there we have it. Now let's talk about, I want you to see this. You can take a rudiment like the Flamma Q and you can break it down. This is a soft flam. So that first stroke is low and the next time it plays is loud. So it must be low high. This stroke is medium because it's not accented and the next time it plays is soft. So it's medium low. This is loud, so it has to be high first. And the next time it's played, it's soft. So it's high low. This one we said was you know soft, so it's low. But it has to be medium, it has to get back up to the medium position when you repeat this for this flam. Right? Because see, that medium has to get ready for that medium. So you can always see that this gets you ready for this. This left, right? I'm sorry, this height, this, this H gets you ready for this H, right? This L gets you ready for that L. Okay, so the bottom always gets you ready for the next time it's used. Right? See how that works? So this left is soft, so it's low. And it stays soft because it's part a grace note of the flam. So there it goes. It ends left because it's going to start left. So that's called the flamma cue. I say flamma cue. Flamma cue. Let's play that. Real high tech, aren't we? I think we make things too complicated. I don't have time to make it complicated. So we have, right, here's the unaccented flam. Back into position. A, ma, Q. Back into position. See, I got my right hand. So let's get that right. Flam, a, ma, Q. Flam, a, ma, Q. Fla, a, ma, Q. Fla. I like to say what I want to happen. Fla a ma q. 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 I don't have my uh, drum angled. I should, huh? Should have this angled like this for proper left hand traditionals. Way better. Okay, now you can do the left side. It's gonna fall off because this is a small snare drum. This video is getting too long. So now let's look at another rudiment. What is this? Flam accent. Flam accent. You can see all these different strokes. So you can do this to figure out exactly where your hands need to be. Let's break it down over here. Too long of a video, but my lessons are a half an hour, so it totally makes sense. So here is an accented flam. So it's a down, it's a control stroke, right? An HL. And then I have to get this left hand up and then tap. Why? Because now I'm on the left side. See how I pounce right up? That's that upstroke. Because it's a left, it's a low, high. Low, high. Low high. So I just did part of it that's called an inverted flam tap. Alternating. So 
So it's really about getting up in time, which I'm going really high so you can see it. I'm using my elbow which, or my forearm, which I don't like to do. But I can only get this high up unless I do this. Okay, so here it is. Jump. I'm going to use that get really high. Tap. Up stroke. Get it up as soon as you can. Don't linger. Of course, after you get going fast, you can't go with these really high levels. You're going to have to use your fingers. My fingers are moving. Well, there's people that fly with this thing. But you can only go really fast if you have eliminated all that extra motion. And that's what this is all about, the nine strokes. The high, medium, and lows, starting position, and how it returns, high, medium, or low. There you get three times three equals nine. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure enjoyed teaching this this morning to a student from Vietnam. And uh, he did very well on it. And I hope you enjoy this exploration. I call it the expanding universe. Because we only started with four strokes that normally are taught in books. But we expanded this universe big time into nine strokes. And we showed how they're all used. And you can break every single rudiment down into these nine strokes. And why are we learning these things? Because rudiments are building blocks. They help you uh, convey what you're trying to do. Convey different sound levels, right? High, medium, low. And to get ready for the next high, medium, low sound level. And this is important because rudiments are like words. Can you imagine only having uh, three words or four words in a vocabulary? Now you have nine words. Way more way more expressiveness, many more sentences can be made with nine words than three words or four words. Same thing with crayons. Do you really want to just color with three crayons? Red, green, and blue, you know, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Um, or do you want to color with a hundred different colors of crayons, which are combinations of the primary colors? So that's what it is. Music, you don't see a sunset with just, you know, three colors. That's not the way God works. I mean, he's creative. So explore one head at a time to get it into position. Maybe watch yourself in a mirror. There's the medium. And then you can add stuff in around that hand that you're watching. And then do everything from the other side to make sure that works. Now, when you go from one side, one rudiment to the next, then you have to figure out every one of those strokes because something's going to happen. It's going to change because you got to get your hands into a different position when you go to the alternating stroke. See, it's different than this. That's repeating one side. I think it's always good to repeat one side and then be able to go to the other side. See how I did that? Okay, I'm slowing it down so you can really see everything. So I was always frustrated. I have st students and teachers, uh, particularly teachers that would go really, really fast, and I couldn't even see what they were doing, so I couldn't learn. So I try to go slow for students. It's not about me showing off. It's about you really seeing what I'm doing so that you can, you know, break it down yourself and go slow and really see what you're doing. It's just like martial arts, man. You know, these Shaolin priests, the people are really, really fast in martial arts. They did everything very slow, precisely, eliminating all the excess move, movements that were going to slow them down. They did that over and over and over and over and over until they could go gradually faster and faster. And now they can go really fast because they don't have any wasted motion in there whatsoever. But they had to focus, concentrate at a slow in motion, slow and in motion. 
I say slow in form. Get your form right. Slow in form. Slow and in form. Slow and in form. That's what my kata, my karate teachers would say. Slow and in form. But you want to do slow motion, you know? You want to see where you're at. So focus, I, I appreciate you hanging there. You might have to watch this video again. Sorry it went so long. I just uh, went five minutes too long. So enjoy. Um, there's more uh, videos down in a playlist. You can see all that information down in the description. And I'm putting out these uh, videos out to my website, Spirit Music uh, Meetups. Dot org and that's on the drum tab and uh, just enjoy this this is a big website that's going to expand and get much bigger so hope you enjoyed it keep playing and be enjoy be enjoy